Good evening, and you are welcome again to our time of interaction with God's Word. It's a joy and a pleasure to bring you to this place of discussing, of reflecting on what God's Word says about being members of church. We are grateful to God that we have continued during this month of September at our church to focus on the subject of membership. Every Sunday, the Lord has spoken to us on the theme, largeness of heart, with some themes coming and speaking specifically to our experiencing the goodness of God, the, the, the blessings of God. In the midweek, starting last week, I began to discuss what it means to be a church member. And we looked at the basis, why it is feasible for us to say that being a member of a local church is biblical last week. Tonight, by God's grace, I'm excited to discuss with you the topic, delightful church members. Delightful church members. So let me say a word of prayer and then we'll get into that discussion. Eternal Father, thank you for the privilege that we have tonight. I ask, O oh God, that as I lead the thoughts of your people, that you indeed, O oh God of glory, will speak through me and speak through the material that you have placed before us. Let your word, O oh God, be interpreted correctly. Let it mix with faith in the hearts of all of us, that we might become more and more the kinds of members of church that you would have us be. Thank you, Eternal Father. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. So, tonight I'm discussing the topic, Delightful Church Members. What does it mean to be a delightful church member? It is simply that you are a blessing, you are a joy, you are gladness, you are a part of the body that enables others to be grateful that you are there. Romans number 15, verse 5 to 7. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you, for the glory of God. Amen. This passage is a base passage for all of my discussions tonight. I'd like for you to notice how the Bible describes and talks about the fact that the God of endurance and encouragement wants us to live in harmony with one another, wants us to be a people who welcome each other as Christ has welcomed us, all for one purpose, the glory of God. Being a delightful church member is about fulfilling this scripture. I'd like to share with you 12 things, 12 attributes, 12 characteristics that I believe exemplify what it means to be a church member. Number one is that I think delightful church members are professors, and I'll explain this. I think delightful church members are partakers. I think delightful church members are performers. Delightful church members are also persuaders. Delightful church members are people who are protective. There are people who are prayerful. There are people who are patient. There are people who are passionate. There are people who are prolific. There are people who are professionals. There are people who live as prototypes and people who are positive. So let's go to the first attribute. I believe that delightful church members are professors. In other words, delightful church members are people who have found their faith in Christ. They are men and women who proclaim who they are. Let us hold on swervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. Hebrews 10, 23. As professors, I believe that church members who are delightful members, church members that pastors, deacons, other members delight to have, are men and women who make it a habit, a lifestyle of professing their faith. 
By professing, it means that there are people who admit who they are in Christ, people who have found their identity in Him, people who have sat their place in the Lord and announced that they belong to Jesus happily without fear. They therefore acknowledge Jesus in their lives. And in so doing, they acknowledge the church. You see, a person who affirms his faith, a person who affirms his allegiance, is one who professes. So, delightful church members are people who profess their faith and they make church a delight because of that. They make their declarations of, of allegiance to Christ something that is so important that it brings delight to the church. The second attribute or the second feature is that the lifeful church members are partakers. They are members who attend. <laughs> Hebrews 10.25, the Bible says, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. The Bible makes it clear that we are not to give up meeting together. There are those who have the opinion today that they don't need to belong to a local church. And there are those who belong, but they do not partake. The Bible makes it clear that a delightful church member is a partaker. A partaker in the things of the fellowship, in the things of the household of faith. So as a partaker, it means that you are available. That you attend the programs of your church. That you appear in the things that relate to the body. I want for you to understand that when you don't show up for church events, you are not very much a delightful church member. Delightful church members are available when there is a call. They attend and understand that attending is the most basic way that they build each other up. They show commitment to the body by their appearance at the things of the church. It's very encouraging to other brothers and sisters when they have an event in church and they see you there. The writer of Hebrews says we are to steer one another up to love and goodness. We are to encourage one another by not forsaking gathering. In truth, you cannot build us and others up if you are not meeting with them regularly and faithfully. It's impossible to be absent and have a connection with the people. It's impossible to not make an appearance and expect that you are going to build a bonding. You are going to create a connection. When you don't show up, then people cannot be linking with you. So partakers are those who show up. You see, as church members, you and I need to appreciate the fact that being a partaker means that the ministry of presence is real for us. Church meetings are both for convenient and inconvenient times. Because that's what you use to build yourself and others up. Faithful attendance. The third thing I'd like for you to pay attention to is that being a delightful church member means that you are a performer. So performers are important. Delightful church members are performers, they are doers. First Corinthians number 12, verse 7, the Bible says, The Holy Spirit displays God's power through each of us as a means of helping the entire church. In other words, the Holy Spirit enables us to do. He enables us to bring things to pass. We are doers. As a performer, you are an originator, an organizer, and an operator. God's call upon you as a, as a member of church is to be a delightful originator, a delightful organizer, a delightful operator. You are a performer. You do. You get things going. Performers make church a delight. As pastor, performers make church a place I love to be in. Because they are do as they get things done. I don't have to chase them down. If they belong in a ministry, they are present. They are doing their work. If they deal with sweeping, they sweep. If they deal with, with IT, they deal with it. I mean, I'm speaking to you tonight because there's a performer behind the scenes. There's a performer that you do not see. A performer in the background ensuring that this can come to you. A delightful church member is a performer. 
He's a performer. He brings joy. He enables you to, 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 to be glad to be there. Listen to what Ephesians number 4 verse 11 to 13 says. Some of us have been given special ability as apostles. To others, he has given the gift of being able to preach well. Some have special ability in winning people to Christ, helping them to trust him as their savior. Still others have a gift for caring for God's people as a shepherd, does his sheep, leading and teaching them in the ways of God. Why is it that he gives us these special abilities to do certain things best? Listen, it is that God's people will be equipped to do better work for him, building up the church, the body of Christ, to a position of strength and maturity until finally we all believe alike about our salvation and about our Savior, God's Son, and all become full grown in the Lord. Yes, to the point of being filled full with Christ. You see, God expects you to be a performer. You are supposed to be doing to build up His church. God has gifted you with this gift so that you can do better work for Him. Performers are operators. Delightful church members are dependable actors. We can count on them to do that which God is calling them to do. We can count on them to fulfill ministry. They are good executors of plans, of programs. They are involved. The ministry of presence is important, partakers. But the ministry of performance is of equal importance because you don't just attend, you ensure that you serve. Ephesians number 2 verse 10 is a very interesting verse. I like to read the amplified version. For we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works which God prepared, for us before and taking path, taking parts which he said, so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. Look, God even designed that he should be a performer. He called you to serve. We are to do the work of ministry. In effect, we are saved to serve. We are to use our gifts to serve God and other members of church. Building up the body in the process. Imagine how many people you impact when they know that they've got you on their team and you are going to deliver on the project. When teammates know that there is a performer around them, when church members know there is a performer with them, then it becomes a delight. But when you do not perform, it becomes a burden. Number four tonight, I'd like for you to think about the lightful church members as persuaders. The lightful church members are great motivators. Hebrews 10, 24, the Bible says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Colossians number four, verse seven to nine. Paul says, Tychicus will tell you all the news about me. He is a dear brother, a faithful minister, and a fellow servant in the Lord. I am sending him to you for the express purpose that you may know about all our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Onesimus, our faithful and dear brother, who is one of you. They will tell you everything that is happening here. Listen, Paul says, I am sending you someone to bring encouragement. Look at what he said to the, to the church in Thessalonica, 1 Thessalonians 5, 11. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Delightful church members are persuaders. They are motivators. They are encouragers. As persuaders, they inspire, they encourage, they influence, they embolden, they induce us. A delightful church member is someone who inspires you. He's an inspirer. And you know what? People take delight in encouragers. They love to be a part of the environment where people can inspire them. You see, God has called you to be the one who spurs others on in love. A delightful church member is, is like someone who's got adrenaline in their veins and they pump that into the rest of the body 
So they become a delight because they pump in encouragement. Tonight, I really want you to think about this. Are you a persuader? Are you, are you, are you an encourager? Are you an influencer for good? You see, encouraging church members, delightful church members who are persuaders, are folks who know how to get people going. They are generous with commendation. They are free with compliments. They are happy to offer praise to anyone deserving of it. And they just know how to pick people who are filled up and they are able to help them. They do not speak like psychophants. No. They are persuaders. Biblical encouragement is so important. It's not about flattery. No. I, I'm, I'm not talking about flattery. I'm talking about men and women whom God has gifted with a grace to encourage others in the church. They are earnest, they are sincere, but they spur us. They are persuaders. The fifth thing tonight is that delightful church members are protective. <laughs> delightful church members, they make sure that they do not fan this God. They protect the unity of the body. They protect the ministry of the church. Matthew number 18, 15 to 17 the Bible says, if a fellow believer hurts you, go and tell him. Walk it out between the two of you. If he listens, you've made a friend. If he won't listen, take one or two others along, so that the presence of witnesses will keep things earnest and try again. If he still won't listen, tell the church. If he won't listen to the church, you'll have to start over from scratch. Confront him with the need of, for repentance and offer again God's forgiving love. Galatians number 6, 1 and 2. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way fulfill the law of Christ. The Bible says, hey, our job is not to sow this code. Our job is to ensure there is reconciliation, there is a togetherness. Delightful church members are protective. They seek to heal and to bridge gaps. By being protective, they are, they are shielding, they are sheltering, they are securing, they are safeguarding, they are screening. They shield the body from harm. They shelter people within the body. When there is an attack, they provide a shelter for them. They secure the, 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 the entire body. They safeguard the interest of Christ. They are very careful to screen out thoughts and comments. They do not encourage rumor mongering. They are people who filter information and comments and thoughts. They don't promote gossip in the body. The lightful church members are protective. They confront people in love and gentleness, not with caustic comments. They address issues that are wrong in ways that will promote healing and health. They confront members in a manner that will address issues. So if they find someone that is a gossip and a slanderer, they do not promote that. They address that in a loving way. They obey the charge of scripture to confront and restore people who are living in sin. Their interest is not in expanding and enlarging and magnifying the sinfulness of another. Their, their interest is ensuring that they protect the name of the Lord, they protect the, the unity of the body, that they protect the oneness of the body. They don't want unresolved issues to fester and grow. Number six, the lightful church members are prayerful. Thank God for prayerful members. The lightful church members are prayerful people. Ephesians number six verse 18, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With these in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Prayerful people Engage in intercession. 
They engage in intervention. They implore the Lord. They pray all the times. They pray for whatever reasons. They have a sense of leading. They pray. Colossians number 4 verse 2. Paul says, devote yourselves to prayer. Being watchful and thankful. You see, delightful church members, they come early for pre-worship prayer at 8.15 at our church. Delightful church members pray before they come to worship as members. Delightful church members ensure that they pray for members of their home cell. Delightful church members ensure they pray for members of their Sunday school. Delightful church members ensure that they pray for those whose birthdays are announced. Delightful church members ensure that they pray for families for affection. Delightful church members are prayerful. <laughs> you and I, if we want to be delightful church members, have a responsibility to pray for each other. The best church members are devoted to prayer. They have learned to depend on God so that they highly value praying to Him because they depend on Him. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Be unceasing and persistent in prayer. Delightful church members are prayerful. You know, as I was preparing this, one thought that God put in my heart that's very strong is that praying in church members, or if you like prayerful church members, they learn to talk less about others to people and more to God about people. Praying church members learn to talk less about others to people and more to God about people. Perhaps if you spend more time praying and speaking with God, you would spend less time talking about people Talking about others. First Samuel number 12 verse 23. Samuel said to the people of Israel. As for me. Far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord. By failing to pray for you. And I will teach you the way that is good and right. So in one sense when you fail to pray. For members of church. You are not being a delightful member. The seventh thing is. The fact that the life of church members are patient. They are members who show a lot of understanding. Ephesians number 4 verse 2 to 3. The Bible says, Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other. Making allowance for each other's faults. Because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit. Binding yourselves together with peace. Do you notice that? It says make allowance. Be patient with each other. Make allowance for each other's faults. Colossians number 3 verse 13 to 15. I'd like to read the worldwide English New Testament. Be patient with one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, forgive that one. Christ forgave you. So you should forgive each other. Beside all these, you must have love. This joins everything together as it should be. Hold on to the peace of God which is in your heart. You were called to have peace because you are all like you are all like one body. Be thankful. Be patient. Make allowance. Forgive one another. As Christ forgive, love one another. You know to be patient, a delightful church member it means that you are forbearing. You forbear a lot of things that happen. It means you are forgiving. You are able to forgive things that are not, that hurt you. You are friendly. You are able to extend and expand the concept of love and affection. Delightful church members are patient. You see, we are not angels in church. We are not perfect people in church. So God calls us to be patient. A delightful church member is patient. A delightful church member is a person who demonstrates constant forbearance. Who is generous with forgiveness. Who exudes friendliness in almost every way possible for them. A delightful church member has patience 
as a major part of their character. Is a fruit of is a part of the fruit of the spirit. The lightful church members, they forbear. Someone didn't greet you, or someone used certain words on you, or someone acted in a particular way, or when something was being distributed, there is forbearance. You forbear. Someone did not act correctly toward you, or perhaps someone stepped on your toes. And they even refuse to acknowledge it, not to talk of apologize. Delightful church members are forgiven. We have shortcomings, we have weaknesses as members of church. None of us are perfect. Delightful church members know how to forbear with each other. We learn to forgive without holding grudges. We learn to become disciples of one another with patience. We learn to put up with our own disappointments. Why? Because we know that church is not made up of perfect people. You see, a church that has patient members is a church that will experience the hand of God mightily. Because patience allows us to be able to reason together, to think together, and to serve in love. Number eight. Delightful church members are passionate. Delightful church members are passionate. Romans number 12 verse 11. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Ha. Delightful church members are passionate. By being passionate, they are enthusiastic. They are eager. They are excited. They are men and women who have a passion for the church. They have a passion for God. They have a passion for other members of the family. Wow! Delightful church members. They are people who literally can, can give you some lift by their enthusiasm. So they are enthusiastic. Very enthusiastic. They are people who are eager when it comes to the things of the family of God. They are encouragers by excellence. They are always excited for the family of God. The Lightful Church members are passionate people. They are fervent when it comes to the things of God. You can almost say they are fanatical about the church fellowship, the church family. They are fervent people. Hmm. You see, when it comes to the Lightful Church members, passion is reflected in their attitude in their action, in their attendance. Zeal is exposed in the way they relate to people, in the way they act in church, and in the way they show up in church. Passionate members are people who make church a place that you don't want to miss. Number nine tonight, the lightful church member are prolifics. That's what I call them. By that I mean the lifeful church members are fruitful people. Romans number 7 verse 4. Therefore, my fellow believers, you too die to the Lord through the crucified body of Christ, so that you may belong to one another. To him who was raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. Do you notice? We become a part of the body of Christ. We belong to one another. We are raised... For only one reason. He says that we may be a fruit for God. We are to be prolific. We are to be people who are fruitful, bringing results. The lightful church members are prolific people. They produce results. We see that their character is changing. Year to year, day to day, the messages they hear is bearing fruit. In the way they speak, their language is improving. In the way they act toward people, they are producing fruit. Jesus said, bear fruit consistent with repentance. Galatians number 6 verse 9. The Living Bible says, And let us not get tired of doing what is right. For after a while we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't get discouraged and give up. You know what? The lightful church members are prolific in doing good, in doing what is right. They just keep doing it. They are consistent when it comes to fruitfulness. They are generous when it comes to being people who produce results. 
Colossians number 1 verse 10. It says, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, ple fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Delightful church members are people who are fruitful, people who produce, people who show up with evidence of growth. <laughs> they are copious. They are so copious in the things they do. Oh, they are bound. They are consistent in the way they bring results. They are not givers today and no longer givers tomorrow. They are men and women who are contributors. These people who are prolific church members. They are contributors of time, of money, of themselves. They are prolific. Delightful church members are people who are professionals. And by the word professionals, I'm saying that the life of church members are high-level doers. <laughs> you know, I talked about those who are performers. But here I speak very specifically to the quality of the performance. They are professionals. Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. Not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Delightful church members are professionals. They are faithful and fantastic. They handle the things of God with deep commitment. They handle the things of God expertly. They handle them excellently. They handle them exceptionally. They do not say, after all, it's church. It doesn't matter. If they are arranging seats, they pay attention to how the seats are well patterned. If they are responsible for music, they ensure that they deliver the very best. If they are in charge of air conditioners, they ensure that air conditioners are doing their optimum best. They do a good job of it. The Lightfoot Church members are professionals. And it shows in their diligence. It shows in their dutifulness. It shows in the, in the demonstration of excellence. The Lightful Church members apply the highest and best standards to the things of God. As pastor, I can tell you that when you have the Lightful Church members who are professionals, your heart is at peace with God. Because you know that they will give the best. The Lightful Church members are also prototypes. Now, the Lightful Church members are, they are copies of Christ. They are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are copies that we literally see. Ephesians 4 verse 1 and 2 says, As a prisoner of the Lord, then I urge you, to live a life worthy of the calling you have received, be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing one with one another in love. We are to live a life worthy of our calling. We are to be prototypes. Philippians number 2 verse 5, the Bible says, Have this same attitude in yourself, which was in Christ Jesus. Look to him as your example in selfless humility. We are to copy Christ. We are to have the same mindset, the same attitude, the same behavior, the same character. The lightful church members are prototypes of what it means to be a believer. We are patterned after Jesus. We are patterned after Christ. We walk the path of Jesus. The lightful church members are people who are samples of what it means to be a Christian. They are people who are a specimen of heaven's divine plan. They are people who are the standards for others to look at and say, that's what it means to be a Christian. The lightful church members represent the design of heaven. They represent that which God himself has, has designed and wants us to be like. The Lightful Church members are prototypes who are engineered to reflect Jesus. They are people who are fabricated after the manner of Christ. They are the kinds of people that you don't need to say to them, you did not so learn of Jesus. 
The Lightfoot Church members are prototypes that just show off what it means to be a Christian. Picture what our church could be. Picture what every church could be. Picture what the world could be. If we are prototypes of Christ, little Jesus is everywhere. The Lightfoot Church members, finally tonight, I said the Lightfoot Church members are people who are positive. There are people who are positive. Philippians number 4, verse 4 to 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. You see, delightful church members are positive people. <laughs> they are faith-filled people. They dwell in the realm of possibility. They operate in the space of hope, of expectation. Delightful church members are positive. They are cheerful. They are confident. They are convicted. They are cheerful people. They don't, they don't allow gloominess to overwhelm them. They don't, they don't allow uh, uh, burdens to overtake them. No, the Lightfoot Church members are positive. They are confident that God, who has begun a good work, will bring it to com completion. The Lightfoot Church members are convicted that God has only good plans for them. They are sure of that. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 10. Paul says, that is why for Christ's sake I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Delightful church members say, oh my, I might be weak, but I am strong because I trust that God is doing something here. In other words, they are optimistic, they are hopeful, they are always bright. Delightful church members never say die. No, 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 no. In fact, they are not naysayers. They are not quitters. Delightful church people are those who say, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Delightful church members, they are those who are so positive. They believe in partnership, in collaboration. They believe we can do things together. We can accomplish together. Delightful church members are positive that everyone has a role, everyone has a position in the body, everyone has a place in God's plan, in God's agenda, in the local church. No one is designed to be a nobody. First Corinthians number 12, 21 to 26. Paul shows us that everyone is a part of the body. Everyone, the Lightfoot Church members understand this. In fact, they are excited about the fact that they are either responsible for cleaning or responsible for sharing food or responsible for praying. The Lightfoot Church members, they are positive partners. They love to collaborate. They love to be companions to people. They are comrades to people in church because they are a positive people. They love getting others to achieve. The Lightfoot Church members are positive people who promote partnership. The Lightfoot Church members, they are positive people. They, 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 they build alliances with, with members of church to deliver on God's work, on God's project. They ensure that they can arrive at the place where God will be pleased with everyone. Delightful church members. So the question tonight really is, what kind of church member are you? Are you a delightful church member or a burden? I have mentioned 12 characteristics tonight. 12 attributes, 12 things that delightful church members are. And there could be more of them. The question is, are you a delightful church member? Can members of your church, can, can members of your ministry 
Can your pastor, can your cell leader, can your group leader, your ministry head, your HOD, can they say truthfully, I'm happy, this is a delightful church member. Think about it. I've given you 12 things. Let me take a moment to let you mention those 12 to me again. So number one, number two, Number three, number four, number five, number six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's see if you got all of those. So one, we said they are professors. Two, we said they are partakers. Three, we said they are performers. Four, we said they are persuaders. Five, we said that they are protective. Six, they are prayerful. Seven, they are patient. Eight, they are passionate. Nine, they are prolific. Ten, they are professionals. Eleven, they are prototypes. And twelve, they are positive. Beloved, I believe God has sent a word to you tonight asking you to check whether you are a delightful church member. I'm excited because I believe God wants you and I to take another step forward as members of a local church. That we might become the ones who build the body to represent what Christians ought to be. That if the local church is a place that looks like how God wants it to be, then Jesus will be exalted and he will draw men unto himself. Tonight I'd like for you to think about this and take a moment to pray. And ask God to help you to be a delightful church member. Perhaps you've been a burden in your church. I hear God say, it's time to check yourself. Would you bow your head with me and let's pray right now? I'd like for you to say, Father, I hear what you are saying today. Maybe you have not been a positive person. Rather than than drive people in faith to work together rather than create optimism an atmosphere of possibility maybe you've been doing the opposite i hear god speaking tonight and saying i need you to to address this in your life i hear god saying look you you need to address this perhaps you have not been living right You've not been the prototype of who God would have you be. Do you need to say, Father, please forgive me. Help me to truly represent you. It might well be that God is looking at you and saying, you have not been a partaker. You stay on the fringes, you stay out, you don't attend, you are not part of it. I hear God saying to you, it's time to be a part of what the church is doing. Or God says, you go there and you leave. You are not a performer. You are not a doer. You are contributing nothing in terms of participation. I hear God speaking to you as well. Or perhaps God is saying, you are not prolific enough. You do not give enough of yourself, enough of your time, enough of your resources. You are not producing fruit in tandem with repentance. Or perhaps God is chiding you tonight. And saying you don't handle my things with professionalism. You treat my work with levity. You are a deacon. You are a pastor. You are a leader of a ministry. You are an usher. You don't show up. I hear God saying that's not being professional with my work. Why don't you speak with him tonight? Eternal Father, thank you again because of your faithfulness. I pray for everyone who is making a decision tonight that, Father, you would cause us to truly arise from this time with you to a place where you cause us to enjoy your goodness and your grace. As we serve you, as we live for you, as we become delightful church members, I pray tonight that you bring forgiveness to those who have been a burden in church, to those who have made church a burden and others are struggling. 
I ask, O oh God, that you quicken us to understand that you have gifted each of us with different things so that church will be a delight. Eternal Father, I pray again that none of us will be a reason why the body of faith is suffering. Thank you, dear Father. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. I'd like to thank you again for being here tonight. I'm excited about what God is doing this month. Again, if you are a part of our church family, I'd like to encourage you to get on our platform where you receive the daily devotion during this month of membership. I'd like to encourage you not to miss church on Sunday as we receive God's teaching from another servant of the Lord who will be bringing God's word specially to us on Sunday at 8.30 a.m. I'd like to encourage everyone to join us for pre-worship prayer at 8.15 where we are knocking on heaven's gate and asking for God to do things not only in worship but concerning our lives together. Let me see on Sunday that you are making a difference as a delightful church member. If you like to give to our church ministry, on your screen our bank accounts are displayed for our regular tithes and offerings, seeds, gifts to the church, whatever else, going to our Zenith bank account, our missions account, that we use for outreach only goes to our boy microfinance account and our building work that god might be leading you to invest in is going to the gt bank account please go ahead and send whatever god is laying on your heart and be prolific about it i'd like to thank you for being here tonight as i close i'd like to pray for all of our pastors all of those attending the minister's conference right now in obomosho let's pray together as we close Thank you, dear Father, for the privilege again to be here. I ask tonight that you will keep watch over everyone attending the minister's conference. The words that you are speaking to all of us who are pastors on the theme of leadership, as service, as sacrifice. Lord, I pray that you will cause our hearts to truly capture it and understand it. Please bless this gathering and let it truly turn out that at the end, pastors come back home and return home strengthened and ready to serve you correctly we pray again for our nation that you will intervene for us tonight dear lord i pray for every single family and ask that you place your hand upon them for good in jesus name we pray oh god for those celebrating today that you will bless them and renew their hearts with great testimonies this new year in jesus name thank you for our nation please intervene in our land and bring solution to our challenges thank you dear father in Jesus name I have prayed amen hallelujah I'll see you on Sunday God bless you